The Dark Lady of DNA, A Scientific Frontier Rosalind Franklin was at the forefront of multiple scientific frontiers as both a female in science and a pioneer in DNA photography. Franklin was the first to successfully photograph DNA in a way that showed the double helix structure. This led to immediate discoveries about the replication of DNA and long-term technological advances that improve people's overall health and well-being. Rosalind Franklin was born on July 25, 1920, in Notting Hill, London. Her parents were Muriel and Ellis Franklin. She had four siblings, a brother, David, two younger brothers, Colin and Roland, and a younger sister, Jennifer. Rosalind went to a boarding school on Bexhill Sea from age 9 to 11, and then in January 1932, she went as a day girl, returning home at night, to St. Paul Girls School. In the summer of 1938, Rosalind went to Paris, and her love of France grew tremendously. She then went to Newham College, Cambridge University, to study natural sciences with a focus on chemistry. In the prelim, she came 32nd in the whole year group. She studied crystal physics in the autumn of her second year and learned about crystallographic space groups. This is a description of the symmetry of the crystal in various forms. She did her final year research project under the supervisor Fred Dayton, a photo and polymer chemist. She did not graduate until 1948, since degrees were not awarded to women then. Newham gave her a fourth year research scholarship from 1941 to 1942. Her supervisor was Ronald Norris, who was considered bad-tempered. He was an autocratic leader. Rosalind was housed in a small, dark workspace and worked on a seemingly impossible project. She, in turn, did not respect her supervisor. In 1942, she registered for a Cambridge PhD, but worked as an assistant research officer in Kingston for the British Coal Utilization Research Association. Her mother wrote, all her life, Rosalind knew exactly where she was going, and at 16, she took science as her subject. What drove Franklin to do the work that she did? So... I think like most scientists, she just had a curiosity about the world and how it worked. Um, and she was an excellent experimentalist and I think really enjoyed that sort of problem solving aspect of science. So I think that's part of what drove her to do the work she did. As World War II came to a close, the world race to develop scientific and technological advances began. This push for scientific understanding led to inquiries about life and reproduction, as well as questions such as how are character traits passed on to offspring, and how do viruses spread from person to person? The answers to these questions lie in DNA. The problem, however, was that no scientist yet knew what DNA looked like or how it was replicated. X-ray crystallography is the technique Rosalind Franklin used to produce photo 51 of DNA. This is a method scientists use to determine the three-dimensional structure of a crystal. Crystals are solids that have repeating units of atoms. Some macromolecules, like DNA, can form fibers that have been seen using X-ray crystallography because their solid forms have atoms arranged in a regular pattern. Scientists mount a purified fiber or crystal in an x-ray tube. The x-ray tube generates x-rays that strike the purified material. X-rays are electromagnetic waves that have a shorter wavelength and higher energy than visible light. Because of their short wavelength, x-rays can pass through a crystal and interact with the electrons of the atoms within the crystal. When x-rays interact with electrons in the crystal, the x-rays scatter or diffract at angles that tell where the atoms in the crystal or the structure are. When the x-rays scatter, they strike a film mounted behind the crystal and leave a pattern of dark marks. The pattern of dark marks on the film gives scientists the information needed about the structure.
Photo 51 is a clear photo of the pattern for B-form DNA. The outside edge of the pattern is a black diamond shape. The diamond has rounded corners and the darkest corners of the pattern are located at the top and bottom of the film. The diamond shape of the pattern has thick fuzzy borders that are varying in darkness. Inside of the diamond is a shape like the letter X. Each line of the X is made of four horizontal lines rather than one solid line. In the center of the photo, there is a hole with dark spots outlining the center of the hole. Rosalind Franklin captured photo 51 in May 1952. However, she didn't complete the analysis over the film until early 1953. Franklin used X-ray crystallography on May 6, 1952 and obtained photo 51. She first minimized how much the X-rays would scatter off the air surrounding the crystal by using hydrogen gas around the crystal. To keep the targeted hydration of the DNA fibers, she pumped the hydrogen gas through a salt solution. Franklin had to tune the solution to ensure the humidity surrounding the crystal would keep the DNA in the B form. Then, after exposing the fibers of DNA for 62 hours, she was left with the pattern that we all know as Photo 51. Rosalind Franklin worked with Maurice Wilkins at King's College, London, when she computed Photo 51. Less than four years after taking photo 51, Rosalind Franklin was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. During the following 18 months, Franklin continued crystallography work in her lab, where she studied the structure of various viruses and RNA. At age 37, Franklin died on April 16, 1958. Markell documents how, without her knowledge, James Watson was shown one of her key X-ray diffraction patterns, and Crick was shown one of her progress reports. Armed with that information, the two men figured out that DNA's structure had to be a double helix, as Francis Crick later admitted. He said, we didn't do the double helix because of things go in pairs or something dreamy like that. We did it for a reason, because we had Rosalind's data. The reality is, is that if life was fair, which it's not, it would be called the Watson-Crick-Franklin model. By observing photo 51, scientists concluded that DNA is in the shape of a double helix. This knowledge allowed the determination of how genes replicate by unzipping and using each of the original strands as a template for a new complementary strand of DNA. James Watson, Francis Crick, and Maurice Wilkins won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for this work. Because Franklin had already passed, she was unable to receive now the award. Her work um, on DNA is really important because understanding the structure of DNA, we now understand that that's how genes are passed on between parents and their offspring. Um, understanding how DNA the structure of DNA worked, um, that's been really fundamental to our understanding of, of medicine as well. Um, so there are just lots of different applications for understanding the structure of DNA. Using the available knowledge about DNA's composition and mathematical techniques, Scientists can now use her discovery to better understand and study the structure of B-form DNA from photo 51. Now that scientists know more about DNA and how it can be replicated, gene modifications can be used to help cure diseases, prevent illnesses, and potentially save people's lives. <laughs>